Hello students, welcome to Geology Classroom. This is Yel Mahesh, Assistant Professor of Geology from Tara Government Degree College, Sangare. In today's class, we are going to discuss about digestion of proteins. So before entering into the topic, let us know what are proteins. So proteins are a major portion of our food and these are the most abundant organic molecules in our bodies. Uh, the proteins form the fundamental basis of structure and function of life. That means our bodies are made up of these proteins only and uh, our functions are also uh, dependent on these proteins. And proteins are macromolecules or uh, polymers and they constitute about 50% of the cellular dry weight. They are not only cell building blocks, uh, they are also uh, execute, uh, they also execute all the cell functions in our bodies. And uh, the proteins are polymers of amino acids. In other words, uh, we can say that uh, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So uh, what are the functions of proteins? So before we know the functions of proteins, uh, let us know from where we can uh, get this protein. So high protein foods include a lean chicken, lean pork, fish, lean beef, tofu, beans, lentils, low fat yogurt, milk, cheese, seeds, nuts, and eggs. So all these are the food materials that give us uh, high amounts of protein. So in the, the functions of proteins, uh, proteins perform a very great variety of specialized and essential functions in the living cell. These functions may be broadly grouped as static functions and dynamic functions. Static functions are also called as structural functions. That means uh, how they are helpful in uh, forming our body. And uh, dynamic functions include various other functions. And coming to the composition of proteins, uh, proteins will have uh, five uh, types of uh, elements uh, in them, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and sulfur. So carbon will be around 50 to 55% in the proteins, and oxygen percentage would be around 90 to 24. Nitrogen will be in 13 percentage, and the hydrogen's uh, part will be around 6 to 7% and sulfur uh, will be in 4% of proteins. So this is the structure of uh, a single amino acid. So these amino acids, they are having two different types of uh, functional groups in them. One is uh, NH2 group, it is also called as uh, amino group. So the end uh, uh, at which this amino group is called as uh, N-terminal end. And another functional group is COOH, a carboxylic group. So the end uh, at which uh, this uh, carboxylic group is called as a C-terminal end. Okay, so uh, each amino acid will have two different endings. One is N-terminal end, another one is C-terminal end. C terminal end will have COOH group or car carboxylic group, and the N terminal end will have amino. And the middle part it makes the uh, body of the acid. This part will be varying in different amino acids. So, coming to the uh, digestion of uh, proteins, so proteins uh, digestion starts from the stomach. Proteins cannot be digested in the mouth. Why? Because in mouth only saliva will be secreted and uh, saliva is having only one enzyme in it uh, that is a salivary amylase enzyme or tylin. In tylin enzyme it can digest the carbohydrates only but not the proteins as there is no other enzyme uh, which helps in the digestion of proteins. So digestion of proteins cannot be started in mouth. So once the food enters into the stomach, the proteins which are present in the food, they will stimulate the secretion of gastrin hormone. So once the gastrin hormone uh, reaches the gastric glands, and these gastric glands are present uh, in the walls of stomach, so the gastrin hormone, it acts on the gastrin uh, glands. 
So the gastric glands, in turn, what they will do, they will release gastric juice. And this gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid, HCl, and pepsinogen. Uh, it is also called as gymogen and renin in infants. So renin will be released only in infants gastric juice. In adults, uh, renin enzyme will not be there. So in the gastric juice pH will be around uh, 1.5 to 2.5. The reason for this lower pH value is the presence of HCl in the gastric juice. And this lower uh, pH value is very, very important for the functioning of pepsin enzyme. The role of gastric uh, hydrochloric acid. So what is the function of hydrochloric acid uh, present inside the uh, gastric juice? So the hydrochloric acid, uh, it causes denaturation of proteins. And this denaturation of proteins is uh, very, very helpful in digesting the protein. And uh, DHCl also helps in converting proteins to metaproteins, uh, which are easily digested. And uh, it converts, uh, it means uh, hydrochloric acid converts pepsinogen to pepsin. So it makes pH in the stomach suitable for the action of pepsin. So with the help of uh, HCl only, pH value is lower uh, in the gastric juice. Lower pH value helps in the functioning of pepsin. So coming to the pepsin enzyme activity. So this pepsin enzyme, it will be uh, secreted by the chief cells of stomach as inactive pepsinogen enzyme. This pepsinogen is converted to pepsin by the activity of hydrochloric acid. The optimum pH required for the pepsin enzyme is 1.5 to 2.5, which is uh, readily available in the gastric help of this hydrochloric acid. And pepsin is an endopeptidase enzyme. Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, peptidase enzymes. One is uh, endopeptidases and another one is exopeptidases. We will come to know the difference of endopeptidases and exopeptidases in this class itself at a later section. So the pepsin enzyme, uh, it catalyzes the hydrolysis of the bonds formed by carboxyl groups in phenylalanine and tyrosine, tryptophan and methionine amino acids. By the action of pepsin, proteins are broken into proteoses and peptones. So we have already discussed that amino acids are the building blocks of the protein. So when two amino acids are linked together, a peptide bond will be formed in between those two amino acids. So when they are linked together, they are called as dipeptides. When a third, a third amino acid is bind to this dipeptide, a second peptide bond will be formed and a tripeptide also will be formed. So in this way, proteins are polypeptides. Many peptide bonds are present in them. That means many amino acids are linked to each other. So in order to digest the proteins completely, individual amino acids that were helped or that were used in the formation of that particular protein has to be separated. So when all the individual amino acids are separated, then only protein digestion will be completed. But uh, with the activity of pepsin, what is happening? Proteins are not completely digested. They are only partially digested. So the partially digested proteins are called as proteoses and peptones. So the activity of this uh, pepsin enzyme uh, can be seen with these two reactions. So as we have already seen, uh, pepsin will be secreted as an inactive form called as pepsinogen enzyme. Uh, HCl enzyme helps in the uh, conversion of pepsinogen into pepsin. And this pepsin, again, uh, it will convert the remaining pepsinogen into pepsin. So in this way, pepsin is uh, triggering the pepsinogen to convert into pepsin. 
this uh, uh, triggering uh, reaction is called as autocata. Later, once the pepsinogen is completely converted into pepsin, then this pepsin acts on the proteins. And these proteins, they will be partially digested to form proteoses and peptides. So coming to the renin enzyme, which is present only in the infant's uh, digestive system. The renin enzyme, it is also called as chymosine. And this uh, renin enzyme helps in the curdling of the milk. As we all know, infants, they feed on only mother's milk or only milk. So, but the milk, uh, 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 the major part of the milk is casein protein. And this casein protein cannot be digested by the pepsin enzyme. As the whole food is uh, milk, in the infants and the protein present in the milk uh, is casein. The casein as it cannot be digested by the pepsin, the casein has to be converted into a form uh, which can be digested by the pepsin. So the casein has to be converted into calcium paracasinate. So to convert the casein into calcium paracasinate, renin enzyme is essential. So that's why infants are having a renin enzyme in their digestive system. With the help of renin enzyme, milk protein casein is converted into calcium paracasin. And this calcium paracasin can be digested by the pepsin to form proteoses and peptones. So digestion of proteins in the duodenum. So duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. So the digested food enters into the duodenum from stomach. When the food enters into the duodenum, pancreas, pancreas uh, uh, will be uh, triggered by the entry of this uh, acidic food into the duodenum. As a result of this triggering, pancreas will release uh, its juice up into the duodenum and this pancreatic juice contains certain enzymes. So out of those uh, enzymes, uh, uh, there are different types of enzymes. Uh, pancreatic juice contains uh, endopeptidases, namely trypsin, chymotrypsin, and elastase and carboxypeptidases. And uh, actually these uh, trypsin, chymotrypsin, elastase, and carboxypeptidases they will be released by the pancreas in inactive form. And these inactive enzymes are called as gymogens. The uh, names of these gymogens are trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, proelastase, and carboxypeptidase. So trypsinogen has to be converted into trypsin. Chymotrypsinogen has to be converted into chymotrypsin. And proelastase has to be converted into elastase. And inactive carboxypeptidases also has to be converted into active carboxypeptidases. So, gymogens are inactive enzymes of the pancreas, and these gymogens they will be converted into active endopeptidases. So, the release of this pancreatic juice will be triggered by uh, uh, the two special hormones uh, called as polycystokinin and pancreogen. So these two hormones, polycystokinin and pancreogenin, they will act on the pancreas to release the pancreatic juice. So with the help of these two hormones only, pancreatic juice will be released into the duodenum. And this pancreatic juice is having the inactive gymogens. Later, these inactive gymogens will be converted into active endopeptidases. And these active endopeptidases, they will uh, participate in the digestion of proteins. And uh, the activity uh, of these enzymes requires a uh, pH of 8. And this pH of 8 uh, will be provided by the alkaline pile and pancreatic juice. The pile juice will be released by the liver and pancreatic juice uh, will come from pancreas. So both these juices, bile juice and pancreatic juice, they will have carbonates and bicarbonates, uh, ions and the salts in them. So the presence of carbonates and bicarbonate ions, they will give some alkaline quality to these juice. So this alkalinity 
uh, provides this uh, pH of E8, which is required for the active uh, functioning of this endopeptide. So, release and activation of gymogens. So, as we have already seen, uh, cholecystokinin uh, hormone uh, triggers this uh, pancreas to release gymogens, and this gymogen uh, has to be uh, triggered uh, or uh, has to be stimulated by a separate enzyme called enteropeptidase. So, when enteropeptidase enzyme acts on gymogen, the gymogen they will be uh, converted into active enzymes and this enteropeptidase enzyme will be produced by the intestinal mucosal epithelial cells mostly uh, the urinal mucosal epithelial cells they will uh, release this enteropeptidase enzyme this enteropeptidase enzyme acts on gymogens and these uh, gymogens then they will be converted into active endopeptidases so this enteropeptidase enzyme, it cleaves off a hexapeptide from the N-terminal end of the trypsinogen to produce trypsin. So uh, trypsinogen will react with enteropeptidase. This enteropeptidase, what it will do, it will cleave a hexapeptide. Hexapeptide means a small branch of uh, protein. Uh, this small branch will have six amino acids. So the six amino acid fragment will be uh, cleaved from the trypsinogen from N terminal N. In this way, when the six amino acid fragment is separated from the trypsinogen, then trypsin will become uh, trypsinogen will become zero. So like this way, trypsin will become activated. The activated trypsin uh, in turn it again completely converts remaining trypsinogen into trypsin. Again, this reaction is also called as autocatalysis. And this uh, trypsin is the common activator of all other pancreatic gymogens to produce active proteases. So namely chymotrypsin, elastase, and carboxypeptidases A and B. In carboxypeptidases, two uh, subgroups are there, carboxypeptidases A and carboxypeptidases B. All these will be formed with the help of trypsin enzyme only. So in this uh, slide, we can see how these inactive gymogens are converted into active enzymes. So trypsinogen is the very, very important one. This trypsinogen is converted into trypsin with the help of enteropeptidase enzyme. And uh, some amount of trypsin formed initially will uh, stimulate uh, the remaining trypsinogen to form trypsin. This reaction is called as autocatalysis. Once the trypsin is formed, this trypsin, it will act on chymotrypsinogen and proelastase to convert them to uh, chymotrypsin and elastase. So, coming to the activity of trypsin, trypsin is an endopeptidase enzyme. Okay, it is secreted in inactive form called as trypsinogen and optimum pH required for this uh, enzyme is uh, 8 and uh, it is activated by the enterokinases. It hydrolyzes the central peptide bond in which the carboxylic group belongs to with amino acids. So in amino acids, some acidic uh, amino acids will be there, some basic amino acids will be there and some neutral amino acids will be there. So neutral amino acids, they will have one amino group and one carboxylic group. Basic amino acids will have more amino groups than uh, carboxylic groups. Acidic amino acids will have more carboxylic groups than uh, amino groups. So basic amino acids means uh, they will have, uh, for example, if they are having one uh, carboxylic group, uh, but two amino groups. So when two amino groups are there in a single amino acid, that will be called as basic amino acid. So this trypsin acts on basic amino acids only. So in this basic amino acids also, so in the central peptide bonds, so this trypsin will not cleave the proteins uh, from the endings of that protein, but uh, instead it uh, cleaves the protein from the middle part. So in this way, the trypsin 
hydrolyzes the central peptide bonds in the protein and in the central peptide bonds are also in which the carboxylic group belongs to basic amino acid so basic amino acids uh, will have carboxylic group also so the carboxylic groups of the basic amino acids will be separated from the proteins in this way trypsin helps in the uh, digestion of Another enzyme, chymotrypsin, uh, it is also endopeptidase. It also requires a pH of 8. Uh, it will be activated by trypsin and it hydrolyzes the central peptide bond in which the carboxylic group belongs to aromatic amino acid. So, chymotrypsin breaks uh, the region where aromatic amino acids are there. Next, third enzyme is elastase enzyme. This is also an endopeptidase enzyme. It will be secreted in an inactive form called proelastase. It also requires a pH of pH. Uh, it also uh, will be activated by the trypsin enzyme. Uh, it digests a special proteins called uh, elastins and uh, collagen. So this elastin and collagen proteins only digested by this elastase enzyme. And this elastase enzyme hydrolyzes the central peptide bonds in which carboxylic group belongs to aromatic amino acids like the uh, enzyme. Next, uh, fourth group of uh, uh, that is carboxypeptidases. A carboxypeptidase is a protease enzyme that hydrolyzes the peptide bond at the carboxy terminal of a protein or peptide. As I have already told, amino acids they will have N terminal and uh, C terminal or carboxy terminal. So this carboxy peptidases they will cleave the proteins uh, from the carboxy terminals only. Trypsin and chymotrypsin degrade proteins into small peptides, further hydrolyzed into dipeptides and tripeptides by carboxy peptidases present in the pancreatic tube. So in this way, trypsin and chymotrypsin, they work on bigger chains to give smaller chains. And on the smaller chains or small, small peptides, this carboxypeptidases will act on. So on bigger chains, trypsin and chymotrypsin will act. As a result, small peptides will be formed. And on the small peptides, carboxypeptidases will work. And this carboxypeptidases cleave the small peptides from the carboxy terminals to give rise to dipeptides and tripeptides. So the procarboxypeptidase, so when it is released, it is called as procarboxypeptidase. So this procarboxypeptidase will be activated by trypsin to carboxypeptidase. And they are metalloenzymes uh, requiring gene. So the activity of uh, carboxypeptidase requires zinc. So when a zinc uh, attaches to this enzyme, then only it will be active. That's why they are called as metalloenzymes. The pancreatic proteases uh, results in formation of free amino acids and small peptides. Mostly these small peptides, they will have two to eight amino acids in them. So in this carboxypeptidases, two subgroups are there, carboxypeptidases A, carboxypeptidases B. Carboxypeptidases A, they are called as metalloenzymes, so they will have a zinc in them, a zinc uh, metal will be present in them, and they are secreted as pro-carboxypeptidase, pro and they will be activated by trypsin. So exopeptidase cannot act on peptide bond inside the protein. And uh, hydrox hydrolyzes uh, this carboxypeptidase A, it hydrolyzes carboxy terminal and uh, it liberates free amino acids. And carboxypeptidase B, uh, like carboxypeptidase A also, it is also exopeptidase. And it hydrolyzes uh, carboxy terminal and of peptide bonds connected with basic amino acids. So the action of uh, proteolytic enzymes, so enzyme, the pepsin enzyme, it acts on phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and methionine uh, amino acids in the proteins. And trypsin enzyme, it acts uh, on the amino acids uh, 
uh, arginine and lysine in the proteins. Chymotrypsin acts at the regions where phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, valine, and leucine and uh, amino acids are there. Elastase acts on alanine, glycine, and serine. Carboxypeptidase A enzymes act on C terminal aromatic amino acids. Carboxypeptidase B enzymes they act uh, on C terminal basic amino acids. So, digestion of proteins in the intestine. The luminal surface of intestine epithelial cells, uh, they will contain uh, amino peptidases, uh, tripeptidases, and tripeptidases enzymes. So, amino peptidases uh, are uh, non specific exopeptidases, that means they are not specific to any amino acids, they can cleave any type of amino acid. And mostly they cleave the N terminal amino acids one by one to produce free amino acids and smaller peptides. And dipeptidases, they act on different type peptides to liberate amino acids. So amino peptidases. So amino peptidases are also exopeptidases. Uh, they act on terminal peptide bonds uh, at the amino terminal end of the peptide chains. So, leucine amino peptidase enzyme is one example for this amino peptidases. It is called as LAP. So, this leucine amino peptidase or LAP releases uh, N terminal basic amino acids and glycine. Proline amino peptidase enzyme. Uh, it is also called as prolidase. It is another amino peptidase enzyme. It removes proline from the end of the polypeptides. So, next category uh, released from this uh, small intestinal juice are Sactus entericus, is tripeptidases. So, these tripeptidases they act on tripeptides, that means the smaller chains uh, which are having three amino acids in them. What they will do, these enzymes, uh, upon acting the tripeptides, they will give a single amino acid and, and a dipeptide. And dipeptidases enzymes are the ones which act on dipeptides. They will completely break down these dipeptides into two amino acids. So classification of proteolytic enzymes, uh, as we have already told, uh, we can classify the proteolytic enzymes into two. One is endopeptidases, another one is exopeptidase. So, what are endopeptidases? Uh, uh, examples for endopeptidases are pepsin, chymotrypsin, and elastin. So, these endopeptidases they act on peptide bonds inside the protein molecule. The protein becomes successively smaller and smaller uh, units by the activity of the endopeptidase. So. Uh, examples for them is uh, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and elastase. And uh, coming to exopeptidases, uh, these exopeptidases they act at the peptide bonds uh, at the end region of the chain. For example, carboxypeptidases are uh, example for these exopeptidases. These carboxypeptidases they act on the peptide bonds only at the carboxy terminal end. And another group of uh, amino peptidases, these amino peptidases are also example for exopeptidases. They will cleave the peptides uh, from the uh, end region of the chain uh, and uh, this end region uh, will be amino terminal end region. So in this slide we can uh, summarize the different types of uh, uh, protease enzymes. Uh, enzymes that uh, digest the proteins and how they uh, act. So proteases can be classified into exopeptidases and endopeptidases. See here in this diagram, one, two, three, four, five. So this is a chain of five amino acids. So endopeptidases, they will break the polypeptide chain in the middle of the, or in the internal parts of this chain. And coming to the exopeptidases, these exopeptidases, what they will do, they will break the chain from the terminal parts of the chain. So either from this terminal or from the this terminal end. So depending on the different types of uh, activities of these different exopeptidases, uh, they have 
given different uh, names uh, like uh, amino peptidases. So amino peptidases, uh, each uh, uh, polypeptide chain on one end they will have amino terminal end, on opposite end they will have carboxy terminal end. So in this uh, chain we have shown this uh, black circle as amino terminal end. So amino peptidases, if the amino peptidase is uh, breaking this uh, terminal amino acid from the uh, amino terminal end, then it will be a exopeptidase. And dipeptidyl peptidases, they will also break the polypeptide chain from terminal end only, but uh, uh, it will break the two uh, uh, amino acids are two polypeptides are tripeptides. And tripeptidyl peptidases, they will break the three pieces from the end terminal end. And carboxy peptidases, uh, they will break uh, from this uh, carboxy terminal end. And peptidyl dipeptidases, they will break the carboxy terminal ends uh, uh, into two dipeptides. And dipeptidases, uh, these dipeptidases, they will act only on dipeptides uh, to give to separate amino acids. Tripeptidases, uh, they will act on tripeptides to give a single amino acid and a dipeptide. And on this dipeptide, these dipeptidases will act on. And omega peptidases, uh, and this omega peptidases, they could be uh, of two types, carboxy peptidases or amino peptidases. So both type of activities are possible with this omega peptidases. In this way, two different types of endopeptidases and exopeptidases are acting on this uh, proteins to basically digest them. So in the initial stages, endopeptidases like pepsin and trypsin, pimotrypsin will act on the bigger chains, polypeptides to convert them into proteoges and uh, 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 peptones. And upon these peptones and proteoses, these exopeptidases uh, will act on them. Exopeptidases, mostly two types of exopeptidases are there, carboxy peptidases and uh, uh, amino peptidases. Apart from these carboxy and amino peptidases, tripeptidases and dipeptidases are also there. So dipeptidases are the last uh, level of this enzyme to digest the uh, proteins into amino acids. So in this way, with the help of all these uh, enzymes, the uh, proteins are completely digested into amino acids. Finally, they are uh, uh, will be readily available for the assay of the assay into the blood. So in next class, we will come with another lesson. Thank you.